I know I'm a bit late. The year 25 is almost over, it seems. So many things happened, good and bad. However, uh, I needed to take a little break since since Christmas, since my last video. Uh, that's okay, it's not because this channel freaks me out or what. No, it's just uh, personal stuff and uh, many things going on. I also working on new music and there will be a new album in February and oh, there are so many things. So I'm getting slowly back on track and hopefully find enough time to create more videos for you because I enjoy it really much. So let's create some art, music, whatever and put out lots of positive energy, hopefully. And the way I start my musical projects in Cubase is always by using a certain template. And here we go. This is my favorite uh, template in Cubase where I start most of my my tracks because I love to create my music out of nothing or just coming from an idea in my head. And for that it's really important that I don't have long loading times and confusing stuff going on, you know. I only need to start Cubase and load this template and I immediately have a sound on my keyboard. I hear my piano sounds. I have four piano sounds going on with Hellion Sonics. That's not really different than in my last template that I had last year, 24. Uh, I only made little changes, but um, you know, some piano sounds, something with pad and then grand piano sound. That's everything I need to track down some, some piano ideas, some, some chords or whatever. And it's really simple, you know, it's uh, like I've said, no long loading times and confusing stuff. And I think that's an important tip for you um, when you kind of when you struggle a lot, you know, and and don't know how to start a project, how to start a new track, and there are so many annoying things going on. Yeah, but you can remove those annoying things, and basically by making everything much easier. So my stuff is always connected. It's always on. Okay, my guitar. I only need to turn on my preamp and I immediately can record my guitar here. I have some uh, guitar tracks going on. This is work in progress, by the way, because I'm trying out this plug-in here, the guitar rig. Um, this was given away for free by Steinberg last year. Wait a moment. Yep, last year. But I still couldn't decide if I like it or not. <laughs> so this is a work in progress, but nothing wrong with that. It, in the moment, I don't work on guitar stuff. I have plans to maybe this year come up with more ambient guitar. I think that's, this would be really interesting. But at the moment, I'm, easy, I'm just practicing and, and not really writing on guitar right now. So I have a little bit of time. Uh, to come up with uh, good presets here that I really, really like. But you can already see where it's going. I have one track for a crunchy sound, one track for a clean sound. That's the plan, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, left and right for, for like a white double guitar. And of course, I always have the chance to record a wet signal. I can make my sound with my, with, with my amp and then record it and it's literally that easy, okay? I just have to take my guitar and I switch on my preamp and that's it. I hit record and I can immediately record. Okay, <laughs> you always have to set up the correct driver. That's uh, sometimes a, a bit confusing because I, because I need to use at least two different ASIO drivers. For so this is the ASIO driver I'm using right now in order to record this video. I could also use this and I have used this uh, driver here by voice meter in most of my videos, but, but for that I need to use um, another piece of software and that's annoying, you know? And uh, so I tried this one by Steinberg and it works pretty good for my videos, but my main production driver uh, that I really need is the, the Behringer. Uh, when I use this, I couldn't record the audio in the video here. So that's that's the point. And uh, this is my main ASIO driver because I work with Behringer mixing console, a little thing here on my desk. 
and it's pretty good. I must say it's, it has really low latency, but that's the confusing part, you know, that you don't confuse your driver. So you start recording and oh, what's going on? Nothing's, nothing's working like expected. <laughs> it's most of the time the, the wrong driver. Fortunately, it's very easy to just change the driver here. Okay. Now give me a moment to explain something. This template you've just seen is my go-to starting point for every new track, okay? That doesn't mean that I only use this template. Of course, I'm working on other templates as well, especially when I'm working on certain projects like an album. At the moment, I'm writing music for a new album. And of course, um, I'm always starting with this empty template. But it gets bigger and bigger and after three or four tracks I create a new template where I put all the pr uh, presets and sounds and instruments of the first tracks together. So I have a new starting point to write the next tracks and by doing it like that I have kind of an organic sound on that album. So that's a really ongoing and, and ever-changing process of creating a template for an album. So this is also a new thing. I have a new track uh, with a Vital synthesizer because I've learned Vital is of course such a good thing. It has little to no loading time. It's easy to use. I use it so often so that it can have its own place uh, here in my new template. Okay, and this is um, the basic sound I'm using. It's just a nice sound for a start, you know, a saw wave with five voices, a little bit of filter, nothing special. And it's a starting point again, because at the moment I love to make sounds on the, on the spot, you know, in the moment and not working too much with presets. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. You have a big library of presets, like 500 presets, but they are never right. <laughs> you can have as many presets as you want, but in the moment, it's hard to find the right one. So, it's, so sometimes it's really easier to create a, a preset just um, in the moment and make it sound right. And right now, that's my favorite way to do it. So, and then I also have the new drum machine that's new in Cubase 14. Because uh, I played around with it, I really like this thing. It's just the normal standard sounds and nothing special. And I can tell you it creates really cool grooves, you know. It's perfect for, for a quick demo or something. Um, you always can take the time to fine-tune everything, of course. But just in the, in the, you know, in the creative writing process, uh, it's really helpful to work with this new drum machine. That's my experience. But I also have my old drum track here going on with, uh, with the groove agent, some sounds that I put together here. And this is exactly the same like in last year. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to reveal the official tempo of the year 2025. Of course, it's just a little joke I did last year with the official tempo, you know. It was 108 BPM last year and this year I decided to go a little bit faster and so I changed the official tempo to 116. So okay, you know, most people just go with 120, I guess, but uh, when I make my template, why not having a certain tempo going on and it's 116. It's a, it's a nice house and pop tempo. Nothing's wrong with that, a little bit faster than last year. Let's see what we can do with it. And just for the sake of it, when you start your next track, always go for 116 and see if it works for you. So, okay, what else can I show you uh, in my template? What's a bit different than last year? Okay, my output channel here is uh, like this hidden area and there is my stereo out channel. And yeah, I only have uh, supervision in so that I can sometimes look at the stats here and the meters. But this is new. I have a limiter activated in the stereo out channel strip. Okay, so that I have a limiter activated now by default is just to 
so that I don't need to think about technical things like meters and levels and stuff. Um, so I can fully focus on my creative writing process. You know, and sometimes it gets a bit too chaotic and loud. So the limiter helps me so to avoid clipping during that process. Another thing that's really about my personal workflow, and that's a good thing with a software like Cubase, and uh, so that you can individualize everything, all the settings, and that's, that's the reason I tell you it's not good or bad and right and wrong. It's just the way I do it. And there are options for you if you have other uh, requirements and then a different workflow than, than I have. Yeah, then you can set up everything differently. For example, so when you go to transport and start mode, start from project cursor position. And this is important. Uh, so the music always starts from your cursor position. And many people love this here, return to start position on stop. So when you stop, the project jumps back to where the cursor started. And that was a setting I used last year. And it, I found it really annoying in my workflow. And it works for me because I work most of the time with markers and I only have like five markers that I use all the time. And it's only one and two, of course, for the circle positions here, the main markers in Cubase. And I have my marker three that jumps shortly before the music starts, before the first bar. Of course, you can also go back. There is a function here in Cubase where you can jump right to the beginning of the project. But as you can see, I have a little offset going on, like minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four bars. And this is annoying as well when you now start and uh, you have to wait. So that's my marker three. It jumps right um, at, to the beginning of the track of the actual music. Okay, and the next marker is my marker four. And that's the reason I don't need to use the start mode, uh, return to start position on stop, because I, use marker four for that. Okay, I can go to whatever, uh, two minute 15 here. And I let's say I have a chorus where I'm working on at that place in time. Uh, so I set up my marker four here. And now I can work on the parts here and I go back with the four and uh, change it all the time. And this is the reason I don't use the start mode thing here. And there's yet another marker, marker five, and that's the last one I need. When I click on five, I'm immediately jumping to like minute 10 in this case. It's always minute 10. <laughs> and uh, this is just my, my, my crap yard, okay? <laughs> it's a crap yard. When I'm working on stuff and I come up with new ideas and sometimes the idea doesn't work quite well, but you don't want to, you just want to remove it, but you don't want to delete it. So I cut it out and jump to minute 10 here with my marker five and paste it here. Okay, so that I don't lose my path and everything else that's in the way, I can just move away to the crap yard here. <laughs> and the only thing you need to do um, is uh, that you, change the length of the project. You go to, where was it? Wait a moment, project setup. And here you can set up the project duration. It's uh, 12 minutes and 50 in my case. You can change it to your needs, but that's normally enough for me. And this is also the place where you can change the time offset, what you have seen here in the beginning of my project, the negative space here. So, and I also have my tempo track and my signature track right here. Um, I use the signature track even more than the tempo track, I think, because I have many signature changes in my music quite automatically. I can't help myself. And uh, it's very easy. You just need to write with the right tool here. You just click on it and now you can uh, change the signature here and go back to 4.4 and I'm not sure if you can just copy that if you have like a combined signatures going on. Oh yeah, you can do that. Okay, just with copy and paste. Superb. So let's remove that 
and jump back to three. Yeah, I only can tell you from my experience that it's so helpful to work with such a simple template. It's a perfect starting point for me. For you, it's it may be a bit different, but it's really helpful. You should make your own templates and you can just go to file and save as template. That's all you need to do. And you give it a name and then you find it in your hub. I open the hub. When you start Cubase, you, this is what you see. Very ugly, <laughs> I know, very clunky, <laughs> but it works somehow. And here is it, all I need 25. And that's how I start my, my projects normally. And when you're working on music for an album, for example, you will come up with a bigger template over time. And it takes a while, okay, to create a bigger template. For example, the album I'm releasing next February, I worked on the template before I wrote the music. I worked on the template for that album and it took about a week. Every day I checked the template, checked the sounds. Are they cool? Uh, are they inspiring? Something like that, okay. And after a week, I just loaded that template and started writing the first track. But maybe we can talk about that a little later and not in this video. So I hope I could inspire you and help you with this video. You know, just let's never stop making music. That's the best we can do in this crazy world. Even more important, don't forget to like and subscribe. So long, my name is Markus. I thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon in the next one.